Lisa Briggs from the Bruce Company is here to answer your plant and garden questions. 270-9933. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Dried out? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's dried out right now. Pretty flowers. Yes, it is finally spring, and there's tons of stuff at the garden center to bring in. Lots of pretty stuff. So, got a beautiful clematis called abilene, and some mandevilla, some salvia for hummingbirds. Lots of really cool petunias. There's just tons of stuff. So What's the ones with the little hanging down? This is a fuchsia. Yeah, I, I think they look like little ballerina dance. Like I, little belly dance. I used to have them, and I had a cat who brought those in the house. <laughs> and they're all under the rugs, staining everything. Yes. The cat just, anyway. Thought they were creatures? I don't know what, what he's thinking. <laughs> Let's get to the phones. We'll start with Peggy in Monona. Hi, Peggy. Hi. I'm calling um, about a hydrangea plant that I have. And last year, I just, I didn't do anything. I didn't prune it back or anything. But um, it just, you know, has the dark, or has the brown uh, stems to it and shows no signs of life. The hydrangeas are really, really slow this year. We have a great big one at the store over by the offices, and it's huge like this. And I just saw for the first time today some little buds coming out of the ground. They are slow everywhere, so just give it a little bit more time. It's the ones that grow in the old wood. Yes, and, and even the ones that grow on the new wood, like the PG types, every, they're all slow. Everything's so just give them a little bit more time, and when the buds come, then just prune out the dead wood. All right, Mary in Oxford. Hi, Mary. Hi. Um, we planted... Um, blueberries we're, we're planting blueberries for the first time and we want to know what the trick is to them well they like acidic soil that's the first thing so you're going to want to add a fair amount of peat moss and some soil sulfur to the gardening bed also blueberries like even moisture there's a lot of moisture in that fruit so as the fruit's developing make sure that you keep it readily or regularly watered also, you're going to want to put a row cover, a net over them to protect the fruit from roving creatures like birds and chipmunks and that kind of stuff. Even watering, that's the key. Even watering is the key and acidic soil. All right, Phil in Orfordville. Hi, Phil, how are you? Hello, fine. We have Pacassandra ground cover around a couple of trees and in other shaded areas in our yard, and it's always been so nice and green. This spring, we have a lot of brown leaves, and it looks like some of the plants are dying. Yeah, Pacassandra can be partially evergreen here, but we had a super dry fall. There's a lot of competition for moisture underneath trees, and we didn't get any snow cover. So I'm not surprised that you're seeing some brown leaves. Give it a little bit more time and then just clip out those bits. If the plants are well established, they should come back without a problem. And they're getting water now. Yeah, and they're getting water now, so don't worry about the watering. <laughs> <laughs> Don in New Lisbon. Hi, Don. Don, you there? Don's asking about a nectarine plant. Okay, well, nectarines are trees that are in the sort of peach and cherry and apricot family. They're not super hardy here, so um, if he's asking, um, you know, it needs to be on a southern slope with good air circulation, and I believe that nectarines are self-pollinating, so you don't need a pair, I believe. Or move to Florida. Or move to Georgia. <laughs> Georgia, there you go. Sure. Tony in Wanakee. Hi, Tony, what's your question? Tony, are you there? Yes. What's your question? Uh, yes. Uh, this year we have knockout roses and Elijah blue uh, grasses mm -hmm. that we've had for two years, and they've always um, they've always come up. And this year, it's like everything is dead. Is it just that late, or they're dead? I think I th again. I think things are really late. I think on your knockouts, especially, you might lose all your top growth, but wait and see what's going to come back from the base. You, they're on their own route, so you might get new shoots since they've established. The grasses are a different story. The fescues are a little bit on their, the edge of their hardiness zone, and with all the dry weather and little snow cover that we had last year, you might have lost your fescues. It's been a challenging year. Yeah, it has been. All right, Lydia. Yeah, this is Lydia. I was wondering, I, I put, I, maybe I put my tomato plants out too early, but, but I have the little cones and stuff, and I have like a yard with shade and sun, you know, and then mm -hmm. I got a cranberry tree and a rose bush, and that's grown every year, every year, okay? Okay. And I've been having some problems with my, the middle of my yard where my grass is. It's like there's some grass in little spots and some not, and I bought some fertilizer stuff, 
My sister said, put that down and then grass seed, you know. And then, uh, you know. So what's, what, do you have a question? Yeah, I got a, I got a question. Uh, did I, did I actually put down the stuff too early? Like the, the um, tomato plants and stuff like that? Because my yard is like, like full of water and mud. Well, yeah. if if you're if they're planted and it's really wet, you might want you might see that you're going to lose them. They might the roots might rot, um, and then just put new ones in once stuff dries out. A little I, early. A little I early. think it's been a little early with the temps. All right, should be good now though. 